Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we are returning to Fallout 76, where we're going to spend another 1,000 script with the Purveyor on 3-star ranged legendary weapons. And as always, I'll take a few moments to talk about each weapon, about what makes each one good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, so let's go on ahead and get started here and see what we get today. Okay, so for our first 3-star ranged legendary weapon, we got a Bloodied Hellstorm Missile Launcher with bashing damage increased by 50% and 90% reduced weight. So the Bloodied effect, in my opinion, is the best effect in general for weapons. I tend to play a Bloodied build, and Bloodied effect does give the best damage output uh, as long as your health is down below uh, 20%. So there are also a lot of perks and mutations and such that all pair very well with that, which makes it not that difficult to stay alive at low health in general. There's definitely some exceptions sometimes when you are a little bit squishier, but for the most part, uh, Bloodied is just a very strong build. So that's a great first star. The bashing damage increased by 50%, unfortunately, is definitely not the effect I would want to see on this weapon. The bashing damage in this game, for weapons generally speaking, is just very low. And even with perks and things like that, you can get it up to maybe something somewhat decent, but it's just never going to be really good unless it's on a minigun with the Shredder mod. Obviously, this is not a minigun, so yeah, the bashing damage increased by 50% is not helping us much here. The 90% reduced weight, on the other hand, is great on a weapon like this because... Most people are not going to be running around with either a Hellstorm or a regular missile launcher as their standard farming weapon. So it's kind of the weapon that you would keep around to, you know, have some fun firing off the missiles that inevitably end up in your inventory instead of just dropping them. Because that can be a little bit more fun. And having a 90% reduced weight on it means that you can just kind of keep it in your inventory specifically for that purpose. So... I really wish the second star was better on this weapon. If it was, this would be a very good roll, something that you could, you know, keep on your person and have a lot of fun with. I might go on ahead and, you know, have some fun with it anyway, but that second star really just is disappointing on this. So, anyway, let's go on ahead and move on to the next one and see what we get. Okay, here we got a Hunter's Ultrasight Gatling Laser with the VATS critical hits doing plus 50% damage and 25% less VATS AP cost. So the Hunter's effect is probably one of the worst of the Slayer's effects, probably about second worst in my opinion, just because it does actually work on Scorch Beasts and therefore the Scorch Beast Queen, so you could get some benefit from it out of that. But in general, that's about the only time you're really going to see a huge benefit from it. I mean, yeah, you're definitely going to be fighting the av the occasional uh, animal or whatever, you know, whether it be a deathclaw, some wandering wolves or hounds or whatever. But you're probably not going out and doing a lot of hunting for those. And I don't know that it's worth keeping a weapon around, especially one this heavy, specifically for that situation. The Vats Critical Hit's doing plus 50% damage. That's a great effect, but this is probably not the best weapon for it. The Ultrasight Gatling Laser has a very high fire rate, and it's just going to chew through your Vats AP very, very quickly. So you could definitely use it a little bit in Vats and get some benefit from the Vats Critical Hit's doing extra damage. But for the most part, it's just... You're going to have to do a lot of aiming down the sights or hip firing with this weapon, even if you are trying to use it in VATS a lot. The 25% less VATS AP cost, that does pair very well with the second star. Unfortunately, I don't think it's really going to be enough to make this weapon truly VATS viable. So, overall, I'm counting this one as pretty much a dud, so let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And here we got an Exterminator's Snub-Nosed 44 pistol with 25% dam plus 25% damage while aiming and faster movement speed while aiming. So the Exterminator's effect is probably, in my opinion, the worst of the Slayer's effects just because there's really not that many times in the game when you're really going to be going out of your way to hunt Mirelurks or Bugs. Yeah, of course you're going to run across them from time to time and have to kill them, but is it really a frequent enough thing that you're going to keep a weapon around specifically for dealing with them you know maybe some players will but i'm not going to typically and i think a lot of players feel the same way about that you're better off just having a weapon that you can rely on in that situation uh 
The plus 25% damage while aiming is a solid effect. This is not necessarily the weapon I would really want it on. I would prefer the VATS effects that we saw on the Ultrasight Gatling laser on this weapon and this plus 25% damage while aiming on the Ultrasight Gatling laser because with pistols, they're a bit underpowered and it really makes sense to try to use VATS to get some extra damage from targeting the weak points and those VATS critical hits. So... The plus 25% damage while aiming, if you really don't like using VATS, could help you with these pistols. I mean, it's definitely going to help you a little bit, but I think you'd be better off using VATS in general with a pistol build. And then the faster movement speed while aiming, I consider that a bit of a dud of a third star, just because if you're using the speed demon mutation, then it's really not doing anything at all for you. And even if you are not using that mutation, then... It is going to help you, but I don't think most players are spending a lot of time running around the battlefield while holding the aim button. I think the, the standard strategy is find a position, aim, fire, release, move. So, you know, if, if I'm wrong, by all means, let me know. I'd love to hear about that. But my guess is that there's not a lot of players doing that. So overall, we got another dud here. Let's see what we can get next. Okay, this one's a little bit better. We got a Troubleshooter Short Pump Action Shotgun with bullets exploding for area damage and faster movement speed while aiming. So the Troubleshooter's effect is one of the better Slayer's effects just because there are definite times when you are going to be fighting robots. So, you know, it doesn't... It could be the uh, nuke silos, it could be a daily ops, it could just be the encrypted event, but there's lots of times when you are definitely going to be fighting robots, and they're not the squishiest creatures around, or they're not really creatures, but they're not the squishiest enemies around, so getting some extra damage against them is definitely not a bad thing. The bolts exploding for area damage, that's a great effect on pretty much any weapon, and especially on shotguns, so because each one of those pellets is going to trigger the explosive effect, and even though it is less damage on the shotguns per pellet, it's still pretty solid effect for shotguns. So one, one of the best second stars for shotguns in general. And then the faster movement speed while aiming, well, I talked about that on the last weapon, still not a fan of it on this weapon, but the first two stars are quite a bit better. So this one I would classify as pretty mediocre, but I, I could see it actually having some utility for the right player. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And this time we get a Stalker's Crossbow with Vats Critical Hits doing plus 50% damage and 250 damage resistance while reloading. So the Stalker's Effect is, in my opinion, the worst first star for at least ranged legendary weapons in the game at this point. It basically doesn't really do what it says, at least not reliably. Uh, I've done a little bit of testing with some Stalker's weapons, and when you're not in combat, they do definitely cost the extra 50% AP, but from what I've seen, they do not guarantee you your plus 100% chance, uh, hit chance. So in other words, you're paying more AP, but you are still not guaranteed to hit the way the Stalker's effect shows that you should be. So yeah, basically drawback, but no benefit, or at least the benefit's not reliable. So... Not a fan of the Stalker's effect. The Vats Critical Hits doing plus 50% damage. That is, again, very good. This is the kind of weapon that you could definitely use in Vats almost exclusively. So being able to get some extra damage from your Critical Hits could be very good with a weapon like this. And the Crossbow, because it fires slowly, it is the kind of weapon that you really want to be trying to take your enemies down in one shot to get the most out of it. So getting some extra damage from those Vats Critical Hits is definitely going to help you do that. The plus 250 damage resistance while reloading, that's kind of interesting on a weapon like this. In general, I'm not a big fan of that third star, but considering that you have to reload after every shot with this weapon, it probably has a little bit more utility than it does on a lot of weapons, just because you're going to be spending a lot of time reloading with a crossbow. Uh, still, I don't think that the 250 damage resistance while reloading is all that good, because as long as you're wearing armor that has somewhere between three and 400 total damage resistance on it, you're not going to be seeing a huge benefit. You will see some benefit, I'm not going to say you're not, but... You're seeing diminishing returns beyond that point, so 
Also, the stalkers, or rather the crossbow, is a perfectly silent weapon, so if you're using it in stealth, then the chances of you being attacked while you're reloading are relatively low, to be honest. So, overall, we got another dud here. Let's see if we can get something good today. This is not it. Here we've got a Berserker's Bow with replenishing action points with each kill and plus one perception. So the Berserker's Effect is not nearly as bad as it used to be because they have changed it so that it does not give you a debuff on the weapon and other mords make it worse than a le non-legendary version of the weapon when you are wearing armor. But you have to be wearing pretty much no armor, have pretty close to a damage resistance of zero to get the most out of the Berserker's Effect. The bow on, uh, on the good side about this is that it's perfectly silent, much like the crossbow, so if you were going to try to run a Berserker's build, stealth is probably the way you're going to want to go, and the bow could be a good choice for that. So, I'm not a big fan of Berserker's builds. I know there are some players out there who do like them, but they're really not for me. But, you know, this isn't necessarily the worst weapon for that, but again, I think that you're much better off with a bloodied or just a full health build. So, overall... Um, Overall, yeah, um, this one is pretty much a dud. The plus one perception, that is going to give you a little bit more of that's accuracy, but it's not really going to do a whole lot else for you. That could be useful for you if you are using this weapon in VATS, and you could, it's definitely the kind of weapon that you could use almost exclusively in VATS for some extra damage from targeting weak points and VATS critical hits, but... Again, it doesn't really make up for the poor first stars, so first and second star. Well, the second star is pretty good, but it um, doesn't make up for the poor first star. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And here we've got a Mutant Slayer's Ultra Sight Gatling Laser with plus 25% damage while aiming and faster movement speed while aiming. So the Mutant Slayer's effect is... Probably one of the better Slayer's effects, just because there are, again, times when you're likely to be hunting down Super Mutants, because they're probably the best per kill experience in the game as far as your typical enemies, you know, non-boss, non-huge enemies. So you're likely to be, you know, grinding West Tech or, you know, in the Daily Ops with Super Mutants and things like that. So it could, and they're not the squishiest enemies in the game, kind of like robots, so it could be worth keeping a weapon around specifically for that. This weapon is a little bit heavy for that, but it's still a pretty solid weapon. So if you were a heavy gunner, especially if you were running the Bare Arms perk, then th this could be potentially worth keeping on hand. The plus 25% damage while aiming is very good on heavy guns because, as I mentioned earlier, the heavy guns are not really typically very good with VATs. So you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're generally going to be either aiming down the sights or hip firing with them and if you aim down the sights with this effect then you're just getting plus 25 percent damage and that's a good thing the faster movement speed while aiming again uh, i'm not going to beat this dead horse uh, i'm not a huge fan of it just because if you're running the speed demon mutation it's not doing much of anything for you and i think most higher level players will be so overall this one's on the upper side of mediocre but still pretty mediocre let's go on ahead and see what else we can get And here we've got a Zealot's Black Powder Pistol with plus 25% damage while aiming and plus 250 damage resistance while reloading. So the Zealot's effect is, I don't know, probably middling as far as the Slayer's effects go. You don't really need a lot of extra damage against the Scorched uh, enemies typically because they're pretty squishy. So they go down pretty easily even with a non-legendary weapon. But the effect does work on Scorch Beasts and the Scorch Beast Queen, so you can get some utility out of it that way. The plus 25% damage while aiming, that is, again, a good effect, and I'd prefer to see VATS effects on a Black Powder weapon because I would definitely be trying to use VATS to target the weak points and get some extra damage from the critical hits because Black Powder weapons reload very, very slowly and you have to reload after every shot. So to really get the benefit out of them, you really need those one-hit kills, which they do have some high base damage. So being able to get some dam extra damage from crits and 
targeting weak points and things like that is going to give you a good chance of being able to get those one-shot kills very frequently. The 25% damage while aiming, it does the same thing. It just, for myself anyway, I'm not as good at targeting weak points without VAT, so I, that's why I would prefer to see it uh, VAT's effect on this sort of weapon. But really, I'm not the type of player to run around with a black powder pistol anyway. And then the plus 250 damage resistance while reloading. Much like the crossbow, this is kind of interesting, but it's even more so the, on this weapon than it is on the crossbow because the black powder pistol is far from silent and cannot be suppressed. So, you're generally going to be drawing some attention to yourself as soon as you fire the weapon. And being that you are going to be spending a lot of time reloading after every shot, basically, and that it's got a slow reload animation, that could actually be a little bit more useful than normal, even with the diminishing returns. So, overall, not excited about this one, but pretty mediocre, not terrible. Let's go on ahead and see what we can get for the last two here. So here we've got a Hunter's Short Lever Action Rifle with plus 50% VAT's hit chance, and hits have a chance to generate a stealth field. So, again, the Hunter's Effect, not really one of the best Slayer's Effects because you're not going to be doing a lot of hunting animals typically. Uh, sure, it works on the Scorch Beasts and Scorch Beast Queen, but I don't know that that really makes it good. The plus 2% percent hit chance is actually one of my favorite second stars. I'm a very heavy VATS user, and that is basically just extra damage because it makes it very easy to target the enemy's weak points, even with the penalties, even at uh, ranges greater than what shows on your card. So it actually does increase your weapon's range a little bit, just because it offsets the penalty to range once you get past that range on your card, although you will still see the damage reduction from that. Um, the VATS hit, or hits having a chance to generate a stealth field, I don't know that that's really going to be that good on this weapon. It's the kind of weapon that you can definitely put a suppressor on and use as a stealth weapon. So it could help you stay in stealth a little bit there, but I think you're just better off using perks and if you need it, chameleon armor or something like that to help yourself stay in stealth. So overall, I, I still consider that third star a little bit disappointing. Probably the second star is really the only good one on this one. So it's pretty mediocre at best. Let's go ahead and see what we get for our last one. And here we've got a two-shot pipe pistol with plus 50% VATS hit chance and faster movement speed while aiming. So I am not generally a fan of the two-shot effect because it divides the damage between two bullets. It actually adds plus 25% damage, but that 125% weapon damage is divided between two bullets. So each one's doing 62.25 or 5 or whatever it is there. Um... And each one of them, those bolts, will also have to penetrate the target's armor independently. Neither of which are a good thing. So, definitely not a fan there. The plus 50% VATS hit chance, again, that's a great effect. One of my favorite um, effects. And one of the drawback, another drawback with the two-shot effect is that it actually significantly decreases the accuracy of the weapon. The plus 50% VATS hit chance on a weapon like this could help to offset that, but I still don't think it's enough to make the effect good. Two-Shot does work very well with explosive weapons, or either explosive weapons that are naturally explosive, like launchers or gauss weapons, or weapons with the second star of explosive bullets. Um, but just, yeah, the plus 50% VATS hit chance, I just don't think it's going to make this weapon good. And then the faster movement speed while aiming, We've seen that like four times today, I think, so I'm not going to go into detail on that, but again, not one of my favorites here. So, didn't really get anything particularly good today, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Maybe next week we will. I appreciate you tuning in. Please be sure that um, if you enjoyed content like this to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps the channel out, and it doesn't cost you any money. And uh, until next time, once again, thank you for joining me.